What's going on guys, this is Mia Sin and welcome to my Tier Laments branded Despia whatever deck profile. This deck is ridiculously overpowered, right now in the OCG it's destroying everyone left and right. It's the second best deck actually, right after Splite. And that's the reason why I really wanted to make a video about this deck because I think when we're gonna get it in the TCG, it might maybe be just like on par with Splite because we don't have Max C so uh, consequently you cannot search Max C in the uh, TCG. So, yeah, before this video starts, make sure you like and subscribe, check me out on Twitch and Instagram, and now let's jump right into it. So, obviously, I'm playing the Phoenix Enforcer package. Uh, even without Verte Anaconda, I would kind of still play it, because even foolishing the D-Hero monsters isn't even bad. Like, you can still do stuff with them. Like, obviously, if you foolish both of them, they're gonna have value, because you can, you know, banish two and then draw uh, draw two. And then you can use Lubelion's effect in order to, um, well, this, th this is Lubelion, in order to shuffle back from the banished into the deck to summon Phoenix Enforcer. And that's going to be able to just, you know, have plays for days. So, Happy Land City, freaking broken deck. And, yeah. So, now we're playing Shadow Beast. Only one Shadow Monster. I think in the OCG, people are only playing, like, two to three Shadow Monsters. So, you could technically play Squamata or, like, Ariel or Wendy. But, I don't know. I think one Shadow Monster is way more than enough. Because you're not really trying to draw hands full of Shadow cards. And now I'm playing three Shailen with three Reino Heart, three Hofinus, and one Meru. So Reino Heart foolishes on summon. Uh, Shailen can summon itself from the hand and then pitch one monster from her hand to the grave. Not as it costs, so it triggers the effect of the Tier Laments. And then the Hofinus is actually a reactive card. So when your opponent activates a monster effect on the field, you can special summon this card from your hand and then foolish the top three cards of your deck to the grave. So if you foolish another Tier Laments and like a Shadow monster, you can make Winda on your opponent's turn. So imagine when you didn't even play a single card and you summon Winda uh, on turn zero, basically. So yeah, this card can become very dangerous very fast. In theory, if you play cards like Farfa, you could also mail Farfa, get really lucky, and then banish a card your opponent controls. So very similar to like the Imperm with Multifaker summoning Steel Quilt as combo, because you get to interrupt your opponent without even, you know, drawing a real hand shop. Uh, but obviously, you need to be a little lucky in order to get those crazy mails, but still very good nonetheless. And then obviously, I'm playing two Aluber with three branded opening, three branded fusion, one Fallen of Albaz, that's a no brainer. And for the hand shops, I'm not, really, I'm not really going super heavy, so only three Ash, three Imperm. I think that's way more than enough because this deck is inherently really, really good going second. You obviously have so many cards to apply pressure. Like, branded fusion is already really terrifying. Fusion Destiny. Uh, the freaking field spell is going to pop cards as well. Uh, chain block, like there's no freaking tomorrow. Search a cards on summon, uh, on activation. Like that, that's already good enough to make your deck like, I don't know. This is always the kind of effect you want to see on field spells. And for the other cards, instant fusion, because that's a one card Kid Kalos, which searches any uh, tier laments card from your deck to your hand on summon. Now the field spell isn't actually a tier laments card, so unfortunately you can't search it, but still you can search everything else and that's that's way more than enough. And yeah, two fusion deployments, so you can either summon Fallen of Albaz, which is like a super poly going second, so why not? Or you can summon Reino Heart, which is a foolish burial, and either way this is ridiculously good. Even if you draw two, it's not bad because the second copy can just be the discard for, uh, let's say, Lubelion's effect, so yeah. Anyways, terraforming, so we get, we get to play four field spells. It's a one-card starter. Uh, basically ends on one guaranteed interruption, and then potential more interruptions depending on what you mail with the Kid Kalos, because that's the reason why this deck has the potential to be unfair. If you get lucky with your mails, you never lose, basically. Anyways, uh, terraforming foolish. Obviously, it's, it's a deck that really thrives off of the graveyard. Caught by the grave, this card is overall always good. And then uh, two meta noise, this card is a Book of Moon, so like a... Really nice Book of Moon and a Foolish, so very similar to Sinister Shadow games. And that's it for the main deck, so for the extra deck I'm playing one Tier Laments Kaleido Heart. This card is really similar to Tribrigate Shireg, the Ominous Omen. Either on its special summon or when another Aqua Monster is sent to your graveyard uh, by a card effect while this card is on the field, you can target one card your opponent controls shuffle it into the deck, so very nice. And if this card is sent to the grave graveyard by a card effect, you can special summon this card from your graveyard and then send one Tier Laments card from your deck to the grave. So, so beneficial, this card is super scary. And if you get to summon this card basically once, it's always going to come back, always going to annoy the living shit out of your opponent. And yeah, th this is like the big boss monster of the deck. Another boss monster would be Mirji, the Ice Blade Dragon, but I think everybody knows what this card does and how you summon it. Basically, it's always with uh, Lubelion. But yeah, uh, anyways, uh, now we got the Dragos Tapelia, very easy to summon. All you need is any tier laments that is dark with a fusion monster. So very generic and it's a super straightforward negate. Very similar to Effect Veiler or stuff like that. 
And now, this card is not a card that you can summon usually, but in the side deck you can because of Super Poly. So in theory, if you're not main decking Super Poly, you might actually want to side deck this card. But it's two warriors with different attributes. So let's say Phoenix Enforcer and Baroness would be like perfect targets for this. And now Lubelion, Alba Renatus. Of, of Albion isn't really worth it because you don't really play branded in red. So you're searching the, the same card anyways. But this card at least can be used to contact Fuse uh, with the Dragon Monsters or upon controls. And that's the reason why Abyssal Dragon Renatus is a little better than Albion in this build. And now, of course, we're playing Phoenix Enforcer, Masquerade, Double Kid Kalos, Elcho, Winda, Mud Dragon of the Swamp, again, for Super Poly. But you, you can actually make this card uh, normally with your engine, but I don't think you really want to, unless you're really trying to play around, like, Effect Veiler, for example. Because, yes, Mud Dragon of the Swamp has an effect that kind of makes all of your monsters with the same attribute as the card, uh, being untargetable by your opponent's card. And you can actually uh, change the attribute of Mud Dragon of the Swamp as a card effect, so... If you want to play around hand shops, this card is actually pretty nice. And the Time Thiever Doer is actually a pretty spicy card because it doesn't detach for cost, but rather as a card effect. So if you have, let's say, a Tier Laments card underneath and like another card, you can detach the Tier Laments card not as a cost, and then it'll trigger its graveyard effect. And that is how you can fuse on your opponent's turn using stuff like Redoer. And finally, I'm playing two non-fusion monsters and non-XCs, which would be the Dark and Verte Anaconda. Even if Verte gets banned, it doesn't really change much. This deck is still ridiculously good. In the OCG, Verte is banned, if I recall correctly, and it didn't change anything. It's still the second best deck. So that's it for the main and extra. And now for the idea section. Freaking idea section, bro. It's always the same thing with me. <laughs> Shadal Squamata with Ariel and Wendy. Kind of already went over them, but... Yeah, it's re relatively um, a no-brainer why you would either want to play them if you're really heavy on the Shadal, or if you don't want to play them if you only want to play that one Shadal Beast, which personally I recommend for the for the exact reason that I uh, said at the very start of the video. And some really good hand shops to play would be Ghost Ogre against uh, Splite because of Gigantic Splite, losing very, very hard to Ogre, and DD Crew being really good against this deck because the Tier Laments, when they're sent to the grave and want to trigger their effects, they really have to shuffle the back themselves into the deck, so... If they get banished, they can't fully resolve. And DD Crew is also not once per turn, so drawing multiples or drawing them for turn uh, can also have a lot of value. And that's the reason why this card is actually pretty nice. And Ogre can definitely be very good in a gigantic splite uh, dominated format. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, Albion kind of already explained that. And then Access Code. Uh, not really going to be summoning this too often because you're usually locked under fusions only because of branded fusion and stuff like that. Uh, Foolish Burial Goods, if you want to play like more Tier Laments card, I think the Salic actually searches a Tier Laments monster from your deck to your hand when it is sent by card effects. So Foolish Goods with a uh, Salic could be nice. And then Cosmic Cyclone Super Poly. Rest Shuttle Incarnation, very nice card to mail because it does have that graveyard effect where you can either flip a... Um, Shuttle monster face up if it was face down or the other way around. And if you draw it, you can revive back a shuttle monster in face up or face down defense. So you can revive back your wind up because they're always uh, summoned properly, if I recall correctly. It's like a fusion summon. So yeah, if you summon window once, you'll be able to summon it multiple times. And that is the reason why this card is actually pretty cool. And finally, Shadal Schism, but a little hard to s uh, search because you're not really playing the Deer Servant with Apkalon and stuff like that. So that's pretty much it for this deck profile. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. As always, you already know it. Don't forget to, uh, uh sorry. I'll see you guys very soon. And uh, yeah, don't forget to like, subscribe, blah, blah, blah. I'm actually really lost. I'll see you guys very soon. Again, peace.